Jim Lucas and welcome to another short video to help you get more apt in ACT. Today we are talking about acceptance in acceptance and commitment therapy. And it's often tricky for clinicians because we can fall into the trap of talking about acceptance instead of showing a client how to do it. And when this happens we say things like, well you can't get rid of your thoughts and feelings but you can accept them. And your client might be, well, I don't really want to accept them. I want to get rid of them. I don't particularly appreciate feeling this way, which is entirely understandable, of course. Has this ever happened to you when you're in a client session? What do you tend to do when that happens? An excellent place to start is with creative hopelessness. It's the process of helping a client recognize the futility of experiential avoidance. It's a good idea to carry out some creative hopelessness work in the first or second session because it sets the course of your work. However, just because you do it once doesn't mean that your client will automatically or permanently give up trying to control, push away or eliminate their anxiety, their guilt, shame, their fear, their anger or sadness. Clients might understand that acceptance makes sense, but often they don't connect fully at an experiential level. And so why is that a problem? Well, think about the last time you felt angry or guilty. What happened? When you felt this way, what went through your mind? What did you say to yourself? What did you do? Did you shout or stay silent? Did you walk away, argue or sink into self-pity? Did you rationalize or reassure yourself? Whatever your reaction, what we tend to do is act out a learned response. From somewhere in your learning history, you repeat a pattern that is often an attempt to control, avoid, or resist what you're feeling. Take a moment to notice your reaction. If you've been there before, if you reacted like that before, how many times would you estimate that that's happened? It's natural to react to uncomfortable emotions. These reactions turn into loops that you repeat and it happens because you're using your head to solve the problem instead of being aware of and open to your experience. Let me give you an example from my life. Sometimes I can come out of a therapy session wishing I'd said or done something different. I might be thinking, I wish I'd said that or done that or not said that or done that. And it gives me a feeling of regret. My mind will be saying something to me like, Jim, you shouldn't have done that. It's a silly mistake. You should know better. One reaction I might have is to move away from this experience by distracting myself, keeping busy or seeking reassurance in supervision. It would be a clear example of how I'd be trying to avoid something uncomfortable, like the feeling of uncertainty. Similarly, I might also do a towards move. Now, I don't want to confuse what I'm about to say with moving towards a value. If you're used to using an act matrix or choice point, then you might be accustomed to thinking about towards and away moves as being towards or away from values. The kind of towards move I'm going to describe is one whereby I try to create certainty, to get away from not being sure about how my client was affected. I might think that I'll ask for some feedback about the session and what I said or did. On the surface, this response might look helpful. However, down below, there are feelings of regret and uncertainty that I'm avoiding. So if we're not mindful, then we can rush into behaviours or solutions that seem helpful, but deny you the chance to be more flexible with your emotions. And that 
can have negative consequences for your well-being and your professional development. So how do you teach acceptance? Well, in my view, you do this best when you do two things. First of all, you practice being aware of and open to your experiences. And secondly, you help clients contact or feel their experiences fully. An important point to make here, of course, is that not all avoidance is terrible. The purpose of acceptance interventions is to target problematic avoidance. It's not a case that all acceptance is good and all avoidance is awful. You want to teach contextual sensitivity as well as variability. In other words, you want to look at the situation with curiosity so you can choose whether it helps to be open or not. It's the same thing with your clients. Specifically, acceptance exercises focus on undermining excessive control of your emotions. You begin by identifying which emotions the client tries to push away. So when talking to your client, you want to look out for statements that suggest that they don't like or want certain feelings. They might tell you that they can't cope with that emotion, that it's unbearable or too much. Statements or language that convey a sense of being unwilling to experience these feelings confirms to you that here is an area of inflexibility. So a helpful starting point is to add awareness first. For example, by saying something like, I notice you've got a feeling there that's too much to hold. Rather than rushing in with an acceptance or diffusing exercise, you take your time while training awareness skills simultaneously. Because the client tells you that they don't like or want that feeling, it means that they'll move somewhere else. So a helpful second step is to clarify where they go instead. For example, you could ask, when that painful experience shows up, where do you go? What do you do with it? This question sets up your next piece to explore the costs of engaging those experientially avoidant moves. Again, you could easily skip over this by doing a cost benefit analysis, which the client gets, which gets the client to think. In act, we invite the client to feel the costs by connecting at an emotional level. You bring the context into the here and now rather than leaving it over there and then. You ask the client to be in that space, noticing and describing what they feel when they make that move over and over again. For example, for the depressed client who stays at home, maybe playing video games a lot, you could take them to the moment at the, where they switch off after many hours of being on that device in another world. You ask them to show you what they feel at that moment. Or for the anxious client who always wakes up in a panic. They pick up their phone, try to go back to sleep or quickly get up and go out. And you invite them to remember the moment they wake up as if it were happening here and now. With warmth and curiosity, you ask them to describe what, it was, what it's like to always do something to get away from their anxiety. What does doing that cost you? When you enter these spaces with your clients, you can expect some pain to show up. Well, that's good. It means you're working somewhere useful. It's not a case that you're trying to make your client cry, but more like you're helping them open the door to what's there. Once you've entered these spaces and you see that your client has connected with the pain of avoidance, you can add some reinforcing functions. For example, you can coach your client, praise them, encourage them, and reward them with a more profound and closer connection with you. After that, you can track their experience to help the client determine if being more open or accepting was useful. For example, you can ask, what are you noticing here and now as I sit here with you as you experience this pain. 
When you do that, you've introduced a new context and new functions that hopefully will motivate the client to be less avoidant in the future. There are various tools that you can use for this task. The unwelcome party guest metaphor and the physicalizing or acceptance of emotions exercises. They emphasize openness to experience. Be mindful though that you don't rush into these exercises. Instead, I recommend that you work the process. Okay, so here's a quick recap of some practical steps. Number one, look for emotions that the client doesn't like or want to have. Number two, add awareness to the context by sharing your observations that they don't feel like they can go near that feeling. Number three, clarify what they do to move away from that emotion, including places they like to go where there's certainty or control. Number four, invite the client to bring the painful experience into the here and now to feel the discomfort. Number five, add reinforcing functions to their openness moves so that you can create new, more repetitive contexts. Number six, track their experience and teach them to notice the benefits of being open. Clients will often fall back into control or avoidance. It's natural, so expect it. Notice how much you do it too. When I notice how easily I fall into excessive control, it helps me appreciate that my client's challenge. If diffusion is about taking a step back from your thoughts, acceptance is about bringing your emotions closer. Both processes sit inside the openness pillar, so they go together. It's about being open to both thinking and feeling. The power of ACT rests inside its experiential methods. So instead of getting the client to think about how avoidance doesn't work, invite them to feel the costs. People don't often change unless they feel uncomfortable enough. If they're not changing, there's a good chance that you need to work more specifically, more precisely in this area of acceptance. Like with any skill, it takes practice, patience and persistence. So keep trying and keep going. If you've enjoyed this episode of Apt in Act, then hit subscribe below. I'll see you again soon for more lessons on building your competencies in acceptance and commitment therapy. Bye-bye for now. Thank you.